Hey everyone, this is Carlos from Coralview. How are you? Happy New Year and happy holidays. We're back live here and today we have a treat. We have a great show in line for you. But um, uh, before we do that, I want to say hello to everybody. Frank, um, uh, Alex, Alex from Biz is here. Michael Schrader is also as well. Sean, uh, Matt Greer is also here as well. We also have Battles OCR in, on YouTube. So we are streaming live on Facebook and YouTube as well. So if you like the show, if this is something that you are waiting for, that you want to see, please make sure that you hit that like, hit that subscribe button. And anytime we get a live video, even if you haven't heard about it, you'll get a notification on your phone, on your computer, letting you know that we're live and um, and we can have a little fun here so um, hey Alex how are you man Matt's there uh, sunny gold also too that's fantastic thank you so much for coming so before before we kind of like we get started here I just want to say Merry Christmas happy Hanukkah uh, Kwanzaa uh, Kwanzaa I'm sorry um, you know um, uh, you know Festivus, uh, whatever it, it's all you know. Everybody, the, the, the you know the 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 thought is everybody is happy. Everybody is uh, together with their loved ones, their families, um, safely, but uh, sharing the special time. Um, and also, happy, happy, happy New Year! This is going to be amazing. Uh, hopefully, twenty twenty one is going to be as. Uh, much better than 2020. Um, it's going to be good to see 2020 go and welcome 2021. Now it is 11 o'clock in the morning here in Chicago, but the added bonus is that in Europe it is about seven or eight o'clock night, and that's why we see some Europeans here visiting us, which is amazing. Alex, I know you don't have to stay up until four o'clock in the morning to watch us, which is great. So this is good for you. Um, we today we have Luke from Philips. He actually works for Signify, which is a Philips company. And Luke is the electronics engineer for Philips. And he's one of the creators of the Philips Coral Care. Um, so this is going to be quite a treat. So I'm going to bring him in, in here and uh, say hello. Hey, Luke. Hey, good morning, Carlos. Thanks for having me. Yeah, good evening for you, actually. Yeah, right? indeed. It's around dinner time here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry I took you out of your dinner. I guess, I guess the family is downstairs eating. Exactly, exactly. So Hopefully uh, they'll, they'll leave you they'll some join food. Later, so no problem. <laughs> no problem, or, or at least leave you some food, right? So there's nothing left you know, by the time you get done. <laughs> All right, Luke, how are you, man? Um, um, before we do this, you are in the Netherlands as well? Yeah, correct, correct, in the Netherlands, yes. So what time is it in the Netherlands right now? So it's uh, 10 past 6. Oh, yeah. 10 past 6. Oh, it's, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, uh, okay, now, before we get started with here and um you know how are you guys doing down in the uh, up you know there in terms of covid and uh is it safe you are you guys okay are you locked down how is it going in there we always want to well, know how everybody is dealing with the with the well, with pandemic we are not really doing great so at the moment we are in in lockdown indeed uh during christmas time uh, it was limited to only three guests a day Wow. So that was uh, so for Christmas time was different this year. Normally we spend it with the family, the full family, and now we had to really do it you now Monday. That so let's, let's spread it over various days. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the the numbers are going down a bit, but the amount of uh, people in the IC, the, the hospital, is going up too high actually. And at a certain mm -hmm. moment, it's really now on a very critical level. So we're not doing great. On the other hand, it's uh, it's it's not at the level on, we had in March and April. So okay. um, from here, I hope uh, it will be better. 2021 should be better. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. 2021 is going to be special. You know what? It's it's that pendulum after 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 2020. You know, 2021 can only look good. It can only be good. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if there's a silver lining to it, um, it is that 2021 is going to be better. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Good, good. I'm glad to hear that. And I'm, I'm sorry to hear about the IC. And, you know, we're kind of in, in a similar, similar situation here. We're not as as tight of a lockdown as we as as you guys have but at the same time we do tend to keep our distance you know mm -hmm. uh christmas for my family you know it was zoom calls yeah, um yeah. 
you know, and it was just my wife and I by ourselves. You know, we visited my sister, but it was a quick visit, keeping distance and everything. Even New Year's and New Year's uh, Eve and New Year's Day is just going to be pretty much two of us, uh, yeah. which is which is sad. But you know what? It's it's one day, and uh, we're looking at the bigger picture. You know, yeah, yeah, we're looking at the bigger picture here. So because at the end of the day, you know, if 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 I get somebody sick, it's not just that person. Then you get the family sick, and even if the family is not sick, then you can't. The family can't go to work because somebody in the house is sick, and it's just a big domino effect. You don't just affect one person you know, the person that you had direct contact with, it is a, 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 a web, a domino effect of, of people that, that get affected by, by something like this, you know? Yep. So, um, um it's not just you, it's not just me. It's, it, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a lot of people. All right. So, uh, you've been a hobbyist since 2004, I hear, um, yep. uh, and you started with a freshwater tank, right? Indeed. Correct. So my first tank was a freshwater tank. It was a very small tank. I think 15 gallons, something like that. So this is already the, the, the second tank. It was a bit bigger. But um, yeah, there's where I, where I started with this hobby. So mm -hmm. freshwater tanks, planted tanks. And at a certain moment, I went to a Chinese restaurant and I saw a marine tank. I thought, this is much better. This looks very nice. <laughs> and um, from there, I started, you know, it was you know, 15 or 16 years old. I, uh, I did a paper round. And uh, this is actually the first tank, uh, the marine tank I owned. It's 15 gallon. It was actually previously a freshwater tank. It had a small skimmer and 45 lamps above it. And from there, I started to, uh, yeah, to enter the hobby uh, through some fellow friends, uh, let's say, uh, Reefers in the area. I learned uh, a lot of things about the hobby, and from there it started to grow. Eh? Um, so that was the first tank. Then uh, I had a tank of about 150 gallon, um, with I had over three years. I also liked it a lot, trying to learn, trying to see what goes wrong. I mean, if you make a mistake, some of your corals will die. Especially you see that some of the SPS species are very sensitive. You learn that in those first years. And I started to grow and grow. Um, I moved to a new house, uh, and then I built the tank I still have at this moment. It's a uh, let's see, 250 gallon tank, mm -hmm. and a filtration system of about uh, equal of that. So the total volume is five to six hundred gallon. And this is actually uh, the, the, the the recent this is a recent image of uh, the Corcare Gen 2 hanging on top of my tank. This is about I think in March or April uh, taken. And uh, yeah, I enjoy the hobby a lot. It's, um, I still uh, yeah, like it a lot. I, 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 okay, I spend some time in it in a week, of course, but uh, I really enjoy this hobby um, for some time now. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Thank you. You know, um, um, we all started somehow. I know Alex says, uh, you know, why, you know, once you, uh, Alex said, uh, you can do both, you know, fresh water and uh, salt water. I know that Devin said, once you go reef, you can't go back. Exactly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so everybody here is chiming in. I want to say, I want to say hello to uh, Port Wolf. I want to say hello to Robert Cray. I want to say, hi, hey, little Ricky. How are you, Ricardo? Jonathan Kenyon, Kenyon is here too as well. Um, we're streaming live on Facebook and we're streaming live on YouTube. So before we get started here with the core of the, sub, of the topic, um, we do have a giveaway. So we do have a giveaway here, and the giveaway is the Philips Hue Starter Kit. Now, this is not, you know, it's for aquarium. You know, maybe you want to put some accent light on the aquarium. Maybe you want to put accent light on the house. Maybe, you know, um, you need some lights on the room to turn on, turn off. Everything is, uh, you know, remote nowadays via Wi-Fi. So we're giving that away. You must be present to win. You must be present to win, and the instructions will be on the comments. And you do have until 12 o'clock Central Time to enter. The cutaway is 12 o'clock Central Time. The contest is going to be handled by Gleam. Now, Gleam is a company that does marketing and does promotions. They have been featured in Forbes magazine and also on the Huffington, uh, Huffington Post. 
um, uh, and uh, that will ensure the legality of the selection process. I know some people out there have claimed that uh, the uh, giveaways are rigged. Uh, I'm going to say they probably don't know what they're talking about because we use Gleam, we have used Gleam, and we always use Gleam for our contests. So that ensures the legality of the process. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, um, um, let's talk about Philips. Yeah, now, of course. You are the one of the engineers, or maybe the head engineer that started this Philip process, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, how, how did it start? Why did it start? Um, yeah. um, was it you said, you know what, maybe I can create a light, I work for Philips, let me get Philips to do it, or was it somebody else? How did it start? Yeah, it's something like that. Um, so so I, I work for Signify, that, that company previously was called uh, Philips Lighting, so, so split, it's now called Signify, but uh, formally everybody still calls it uh, Philips Lighting. Um, I worked there for 10 years already as an electronics designer um, in a pre-development department, so but, which we make concepts. So a concept, electronics concept for an, a new light, a new system, etc. So I worked on some amazing projects. Uh, I did the first incandescent replacement, the first LED incandescent, incandescent replacement bulb. I worked on Coral Care, of course. But I also, also worked a lot on the, on the U system. So uh, you just show in a kit with uh, U bulbs, but I worked a lot on U luminaires. I created an electronics building block for that one, which is already, I think, produced for over 100 million times. So that was a nice achievement. Um, but next to that, um, we get in our, so, so Monday to Friday, we, we, we just do our design work and Friday afternoon, as they call it, we actually uh, are able or allowed to have an additional activity. So it started there. I, I just started with uh, the new tank that was just shown. And uh, on that side, I was still working with uh, 18 T5 uh, lamps, 54 watt, a lot of heat, poor control. Uh, and uh, also each year I had to replace the bulbs. And on the other side at work, I was working with high-end uh, cutting edge LED technology. So I was thinking hmm, maybe can't we combine this knowledge uh, we have on the, on our in our company about lighting with uh, let's say the application of this hobby and um, I pitched this story to uh, to the management and uh, it was back in 2014 or 2015 even and uh, I just got a very small uh, investigation budget to start the activity so so indeed it, it, it this core care is my baby as I sometimes call it Mm -hmm. it, uh, it really started from there, and there we, we build it up, uh, the knowledge. Uh, we uh, worked together with universities, we worked on an optical formula, a uh, spectral formula, and uh, we translated that eventually to um, a product. The first product was launched, I think, in um, 2016 in Europe. That was the first project launched in May on the Intel Zoo. And in 2018, we made the second revision, and Gen 2, which is now launched in March this year, is yeah, it's in 2020. So let yeah. me get this. So let me get this straight. Philips, the light, actually has been around since 2016. So it's not a brand new product. It's been around. It hasn't been around in the United States, but in Europe. You know, where we see some of this amazing, beautiful tanks um, uh, has been there for 2016. And on top of that, you're saying that this Philips Generation 2, it is Generation 2, which means that all the mistakes, all the things that you could have and should have done differently from Generation 1, yeah. all the shortcomings of Generation 1 are not in Generation 2. Yeah, correct. It's an, it's okay, an evolution. So it's an evolution okay. indeed. That the evolution. I mean, you're using generation one is using older LEDs, and yep. then generation two is using much newer technology. It's far more efficient, and um, and it's just an overall better light. You learned a lot from generation one, and then you said, here are the things that we're going to change. Let's do it in generation two. So technically, generation one is not as good as generation two. No, but still a good product. <laughs> yeah, it's still a good. I mean, I, I know, generation I, I one, we have a, have a lot of good. Uh, Let's say got a, got good results with them. There are still people running on generation one, the first generation when even the, the demonstration models of 2015 are mm -hmm. still running above tanks. And 
people are still having good results with them. Yeah, but so, uh, the thing, but you've you've made it better. You've yes, made correct. you know, it, like I an, said, like it, I mentioned, it's an evolution indeed. Yes. Yeah, starting at okay. the at the first prototype and now coming to this version, we now um, launch for not only Europe for the international market. Okay, that's fantastic. That's that's actually good. I mean, it's like generation one is good, but generation two is much, much better. And it's just like any other light. I mean, I know there's other companies out there, they have five generations of lights, you know, and, uh, you know, every generation becomes better. Every generation is much more uh, efficient, uh, mm -hmm. uses less energy and produces more light, you know. Yep. So, yeah, that that's awesome. All right. Uh, now, why do you think the European market has adapted LEDs like the Philips light so much? I mean, when I think of European market, I'm thinking of, um, I'm not thinking of metal halides. I'm thinking of fluorescent bulbs. I'm looking, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm thinking of T5 bulbs. I mean, I've seen so many European tanks that are absolutely beautiful, beautiful. And they have fluorescent lights over, mm -hmm. which, you know, the one side of the coin is, you know, that you don't need LEDs, you don't need this huge high par to have beautiful tanks. You have to have, you know, lighting is just one part of the equation. But yeah. why has the Philips light, the LED, has taken over so much in the in the European market? Why, you know, is it what is it about the light that makes the Europeans say, okay, let me put the T5s away and let's switch to the LEDs, which is yeah. something that was on the US market, but not in the European market. Why? Yeah. Yeah, so the T5 is uh, was a very popular choice some years ago. I also started with that choice uh, when I had uh, a bigger tank. Um, if you see the difference between LED and T5, it's a long discussion we had, and I think we are at a point, we, we made this claim already in 2016 with a scientific document, which actually proves that um, the, the LED lighting was performing as good as T5 lighting. But T5 mm -hmm. things, of course, common. Yeah, they, they already have experience with that. At first, we it, it took some time to, to get people belief into LED lighting. But at, mm -hmm. at a certain point, we actually saw that, okay, people recognize they can meet the same as T5 lighting and even go beyond that. If you look with respect to controllability, if you look to respect energy efficiency, the stability is also very important. If you look in T5 lighting, within one year, you really drop down in uh, light output. Sometimes uh, you reduce about 20% per year in the first wow. year, which actually also has quite an impact if you re replace your bulbs again. So there's quite a lot of maintenance on this T5 lighting. It, it generates a lot of heat. And there is, uh, of course, the technology is good. It's one of the most homogeneous light output. The distribution of the light is very good. But on the mm -hmm. other hand, the, 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 the nowadays technology with LED, you can uh, have a, a much better uh, light setup than you could have before with only T5 lighting. Well, and this is also recognized now in the market. Fully. Yeah, okay. Well, let's talk about distribution since you brought up that point, okay? Mm -hmm. what, is the, what makes the Philips light, the generation two distribution so special? What is it about that light? Why is, you know, what, what is it about the distribution of the light that makes it so good? Yeah, so we we did a lot of uh, research on uh, on light distribution and, and why this should be important for coral growth. Um, and, and we actually noticed uh, quite soon that it's very important to have a homogeneous light distribution. It means actually that a coral or a reef or a tank should be lit from multiple directions. So it should be uh, actually, uh, and the, the, the coral should be covered from all directions with light. Mm -hmm. To do that, uh, you need to have a uniform light. So the, the, the active light surface from the lamp should be as big as possible. And that one should also not have a single hotspot. You see often that uh, a lamp with a hotspot in the middle part, you have a, a very bright spot. Uh, you have a lot of power there. But in, on the other parts of the, the, uh, of the tank, or actually the sides of the coral, not that much light is entering there. And you see that back in the growth, but also the way the coral will grow and also the way the, how fast it will develop. So we, we worked on a, on a special optical system, a patented uh, light guide, as we call it. So uh, in the picture, you see actually um, on the bottom side, you see a, a white plane. Um, uh, maybe previous picture was a bit easier. Um, so there's a white plane there. On top of that, there we have a, a special light guide, as we call it. 
this uh, at first directs the light towards your aquarium, but also uh, gathers all the light from the different uh, LEDs, which all have uh, various wavelengths, like uh, a blue LED, a cyan LED, and a white LED. This is combined and mixed together, so you also get a uniform spectrum, which is important. And then it's actually blasted towards the aquarium. Um, what you then get is um, some rippling effect uh, with a diffuse glass plate that is also uh, removed and reduced a little bit to really get a very homogeneous light distribution. Okay. Image. Go ahead. Yeah, the, the second image that you showed is actually some addition we did um, to the second generation. We improved the optics there a bit further. We improved the, the efficiency there with some reflectors uh, inside the luminaire and also added some clear and uh, diffuse spots to mimic uh, a daylight pattern a bit further. That's fantastic. I mean, the layout of the lights, the LEDs, is completely all over the the yeah. the, the frame <laughs> or the footprint of it. There's not a single pod of light. And that makes sense because you don't have that spotlight kind of high hot spot where in this particular spot you have incredibly high par and then nothing else around it this light seems to spread everything around i bet you and we talked about this yesterday when we were talking about it you actually had some kind of lens that you put the light over to measure the amount of light output so mm -hmm. that you would gather all the light coming from this fixture and measure the light because it's kind of hard to measure this huge distribution so talk about that how did you guys measure the light output of this fixture yeah so so carlos and i we, we indeed had a, a pre-discussion about uh, how to measure light how, how we do it in the company just general lighting not specifically uh, marine lighting but really general lighting and how it's done in the hobby with a with a, with a power meter a quantum sensor so in general lighting, it, it, the thing that matters is actually at first is how much light is coming out of the product, optical watts. It's, it's, it's uh, light photons. You can count those light photons. Uh, a photon is just a, a tiny, uh, um, <coughs> let's call it a, a, a photon, uh, which, which has a, a certain wavelength and a certain energy. Um, and, and to really uh, know how much light is coming out of the product is uh, you put them into a chamber. We call it an integrating sphere. It's a, it's a big sphere, actually. It's mm -hmm. a painted white from the inside. You put a lamp into it, uh, and uh, the lamp radiates. Uh, it's just enabled. And you start counting all photons which uh, hit the sensor. And with that, you know actually how much of input power, so the, the, the power from the electrical net, is being translated to uh, optical power. So light itself, and you also know uh, what the wavelength of each individual component is, and that is actually important to understand. Okay, how much light is how efficient is this product? Uh, we call it the wall plug efficiency. That's actually the difference between the amount of power which goes into the lamp to the mm -hmm. amount of optical power which goes out of the product. That is how we measure the general lighting. Um, and in the hobby, it's of course a bit different. In the, in the hobby, it's not realistic to to, to 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 use an integrating sphere measurement in the, in an aquarium or something like that. There, you need to go a bit further towards the application. And something which is recognized in the hobby is, of course, the the par meter. Uh, it's, it's 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 quite cheap. It's still an expensive sensor, but it's for 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 uh, let's say professional lighting perspective a very cheap uh, method. Yes. It's actually a sensor which uh, which measures uh, all the photons of light between I think 400 to 700 nanometer and accumulates those and then you get a value, uh, the PPFD value, um, which then represent, could represent the, 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 the intensity of the light. Um, that, uh, that having said, so um, the problem is a little bit that... Um, this sensor, when it, when it's commonly used in the hobby, and you see, okay, I'm, I'm I'm measuring here and there the power value on this specific spot, is that this sensor is always pointing upwards. And these sensors they have a, a cosine response, as you call it, it means actually that all light coming directly towards the sensor is measured at full intensity, while all uh, light which coming in from an angle uh, is actually being damped further. So it's oh. not being added up to it one to one, but it's actually damped. So which means actually that a coral, if you look into, if you look to a branched coral, uh, the Zoic Centennial there, 
um, they are not all pointing upwards. Actually, they are all around. They are looking in all directions. While mm -hmm. these photoactive cells, they can also receive light from the sides and, and, and use them to translate it into, uh, let's say, energy for growth. So what would be actually the better measurement would be that you use this this single sensor and measure them in all kinds of directions. So you measure mm -hmm. the top, but also to the sides. And then you will see actually that if you have a large uh, active surface or larger luminaires with large active surfaces will actually result in a more homogeneous light distribution than uh, a spotlight. Mm -hmm. And that is something which we, we realized quite soon in 2015 already. And that's why we have such a high, uh, such a large active surface. Um, yeah, that's actually a, a part of the story without yeah. too much. Yeah, no, that's, you know, it's it's amazing how, you know, because I know there's there's companies out there that measure in the hobby that measure light, but yes, you know, it's like the disclosure is uh, most of them, they just put the sensor straight up and measure the light. And that just gives you a tiny little snapshot of what the entire light fixture is. And like you said, the mm -hmm. correct way would be to move the sensor around to see what kind of lighting you're getting. And some of the fixtures will get a lot of light from the top, but they don't get any light from, from the sides. While the Philips, which mimic is kind of, you know, it almost mimics like a T5 lighting where there's yes. lighting coming around from everywhere. So yeah. that is that is amazing. Now, let's talk about distribution and the size of the unit, okay? Mm -hmm. And why is the Philips the size it is? Why isn't it smaller? You know, what you know, it's like when you look at the light, it's like, oh, you know, it's got a pretty good size. It's got a good, pretty good heft. Tell us what's the what was the the logic? What's the the the, the thought of the size of the light? Yeah, so the size, I, I, I just explained part of this already, um, is, is that indeed making the lamp bigger, so having a large active surface, and which an active surface, I mean, the area where LED is, if, sorry, where light is really being outputted. That area should be large. To, if you really have a spot, then you, 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 you have to always uh, point it downwards, of course, mm -hmm. uh, and, and and by just increasing that uh, that that active area, it actually helps to spread the the light more even. The, okay. the challenge about that is is that if you only have a limited amount of LEDs, it's also make sure that the spectrum it's outputting is also homogeneous. That you do not get that disco effect. You know, you can yes. really see individual LED colors. So having a big fixture. And making sure that also the, the light is um, mixed correctly, that's the biggest challenge here. So, um, uh, yeah, so that's that's great. I wanted to say, so, you know, those people out there that are putting out lights that look similar, but they're much smaller, de technically what they're doing is a spotlight, you know, which is the smaller area you create, you, 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 you're you putting the LEDs closer together and technically you're creating a spotlight. So you're not getting that light distribution that you get with a much larger fixture or with T5s, you know, yeah. where that you get that balanced effect. And just like you said, I, it seems to me that the the larger the, the size, the larger the area, the harder it is to make the light correct because you have to make sure that the spectrum is correct through, throughout the entire space and not just in little spots. And in between, you got drops in 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 the, um, in the spectrum, creating that disco effect, right? Yeah, correct. Okay. Correct. Uh, yeah, we're we're learning here. We're learning here. I, I, I'm actually learning a lot right here. So I have, as you can see right here, I have the Philips lights running on my tank. And I know they've put pictures in there before. And I've had the picture. I've had the lights for about six months. Yeah, more a little more over than six months. And one thing that I noticed, though, is that it does take the corals a while to acclimate. Yep. And can can we talk about that? Why why is it that you that the corals take so long to acclimate? Um, and is it really taking that long on the Phillips, or is it just because is a different lighting? You know, um, you know, is it is it is it just the Phillips, or is it just if you put any light over the tank, it's going to take time for the corals to acclimate? You know, what have you guys have have you guys seen? Yeah, it, it really depends on from where you, your starting point. Eh? Did you start with T5 lighting? Did you already start with a homogeneous light source? Uh, so, so what is the starting point? Was it uh, metal halide lighting? Was it a, a point source? That really impacts uh, because corals really adapt to everything. They can 
they adapt to every lighting situation. It's not that they, the, the, the growth becomes more efficient or some way, but corals re really have a, a way of adapting. And they do that by uh, distributing their, their zoic centella density differently over the coral tissue. And if you if you're coming from a let's say let's say you, you're coming from a tank with a lot of point sources, um, the, the 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 majority of the, the intensity was actually on, uh, hitting the coral on the top side of the coral itself. Mm -hmm. So what did the coral do? It actually redistributed its zoic centella density that way, that uh, it also uh, made sure that it could. Um, um, I'm trying to find the English word. Process all the energy, all the light, uh, all okay. the light energy uh, from that coral, from that yeah, all that light energy I, into I, useful. Uh, I think you're useful. you're talking about absorbing, absorbing. Yes, so absorbs correct, the yeah. light and converts it into useful energy. Yes, okay. yes, correct. Because there was a lot of light coming from the top, and uh, at first it's of always, always that's a stress reaction, and it needs to um, make sure that it soaks and that density is in that way that it really can. Um, can make sure that it can handle it. But if you then go into, uh, uh, let's say, from you skip them to a homogeneous light source, mm -hmm. that light coming from the top will be reduced, but the light coming from the side will be a lot higher. So it then needs to reproduce, uh, redistribute those uh, Zoic Centella again, and that just simply takes time. And um, that, that, that time is required for the coral to adapt. It can even mean that your alkalinity goes, uh, let's say your uh, alkalinity uptake goes mm -hmm. down for a moment because uh, it needs to adapt. But then after some months, you will notice because now the, the coral is lit from all directions that it actually will grow faster. And like you said yourself and also showed in some, uh, some of your pictures, is actually that you also will see that the... Uh, uh, coral will grow differently. It will grow wider, and uh, oh. it also will, yeah, like you call it yourself, fill in the. It will become a bit more robust. That's yeah, correct, I, right? That's yeah, something which you uh, witnessed. Yeah, I've noticed that. I've noticed that. So um, um, I asked my producer April to get so. My the the reason I asked that question about the months is because it, you know when I. I had my tank and I had a different type of lighting and I'll ask my producer to show that picture right now. So I was running my fish tank with a different lighting and see, you can see four pots in there and you can see that they're more of a hot spot. You know, that it's a, it's a, it's a single point source. I'm not saying they're bad. I'm not saying they're right. I'm just saying that's what I had back then. So my corals were used to this single spot coming from the lights strictly strictly down and that's what the corals were growing so then i switched over to the phillips light where you have that bigger light distribution so my corals like you said my corals were so used to a single spot light coming from the top and all of a sudden now they got uh, a light where light is coming from everywhere so my corals took about two to three months to to acclimate to the new light and then once they acclimated to the new light, the type of growth that I received, it, it's amazing. And I'll show you this. I'm going to show you some side-by-side -side pictures of corals that I had, you know, where I took the pictures um, uh, before. So on the left-hand side, you know, and I don't know what this coral is. Um, you know, I don't know what it's called. I've never been good with names. Uh, I like the scientific names. And uh, this one, I don't know what it is. But uh, anyway, on the left-hand side, you see that coral picture was taken in April of 20. 20. And the picture on the right, it was taken just about two weeks ago. So you can see the growth of the coral. The coral is getting fuller. You know, it's not branching as it's not long branches anymore. It's just getting tighter and fuller because the light is coming from all different directions instead of just from the top. I'll ask my producer to go to the next picture right here. And this is a big stark, stark, stark contrast right here. Same time lapse. This was April and this is a few weeks ago. Um, um, and you can see the difference. The left-hand side, you see that branching of, you know, just several branches because the, the light is coming straightly from the top. And then when I switched over to the Phillips, you see how it filled up. The coral started to look more like a natural coral with a almost like a table like um where it's not reaching up as much as growing sideways and let's go to the third picture 
And take a look at this one. And those of you that, that, that think that when you change lights, you're going to sacrifice color, take a look at that picture right there. It's, um, it's, uh, it's called the hat, the hot flesh coral. It's from Battle Corals. Um, just a shout out to Adam, always a friend of Coral View. On the left-hand side, same thing. Take a look at that coral that was taken in April. And then just a few weeks ago, I took that picture of the same coral. Uh, obviously, this coral has been fragged a couple of times, but you can see the pinks of it. And at the same time, look at it. The coral is not going up. It's growing sideways. It's getting fuller. So um, those are examples of what I have seen in person, not through somebody told me, not through a, a paper that I read, it, this is this is firsthand experience of the type of growth that I have experienced with the Phillips lights, um, and and it, it sounds to me that it does um, um, reaffirm your studies that you that you actually uh, came up with when you were developing the light. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, indeed, indeed, I fully agree. I, I recognized it as well. Yeah, it, it's it's of course it's a new product for the for, for the U.S. market for the European. Yes. European European market. It's already four or five years of experience. Correct. And, and you were actually, it, it, the, the product is recognized uh, very well within the European market. And also, it is also selling very well there. And uh, we have a lot of um, over a thousand tanks uh, with Coral Care. Um, so, 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 yeah, we recognize this message, but indeed, it also need to land in the US because, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, it's a new product over here. Over there. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's a, you know, and let me let me clarify again. It is a new product in the U.S., but it's not a new product. If anything, it's the second generation of a product, which means that for those people that are not early adopters, for those people that are always waiting for, you know what? Let's let the company work out that first generation, and when they come up with the second generation, then I'll buy the light because I know that they've worked out the kinks and everything. So remember, the the Philips Coral Care that we're talking about is the generation two, which is the one that with the all the updates the latest technology and all the study, all the learning from the Philips One generation has been applied to developing this new light. Yeah. Um, um, you know, if you could have changed something, this is the light where you changed it, you know? So that's <laughs> what I wanted to make sure that people, the I people knew. <laughs> so before we move on, I want to say thank you to everybody here for joining us. I know David Dakin is here, the owner of Coralview. Michael Schrader is here as well. Jonathan Kenyon is here too. Um, um, uh, Chaz People is here. Alex, you're still here, you know, because it's only like seven o'clock your time. You know, what are we making for dinner, Alex? Um, um, so anyway, if you want to watch this, you can watch it through Facebook. You can watch it through YouTube. If you like what you're listening, if you like what you're seeing, please make sure that you hit that like subscribe button because again, the subscribe button tells our higher ups, tells Dave and Brandy, the owners of the company that this is working and we should do more. And honestly, we want to share this time with you guys. It is a lot of fun. At the same time, I want to make sure that everybody remembers we have a giveaway, which is the Philips uh, starter pack or starter kit. It's a $200 value and you can sign up for it through Gleam. The link is in the comments, but you have to be present to win and you have only 15 more minutes. There are only 15 minutes left in the um, um, in the giveaway. So think about it. We've only had the giveaway for 45 minutes and it's only for people in, in, that are present. So your chances of winning are pretty, pretty high. I would say they're pretty high. I, I, I'm starting to sound like an NPR guy, you know, where your chances <laughs> of winning something are great because it's, it's only an hour. So I want to make sure you do that. Okay. So um, one of the biggest, uh, not one of the biggest things, but when I first got the, the light six months ago, I noticed I picked them up. And as soon as I picked them up, I'm like, okay, there's some, there's some umph to it. There's some, there's, yeah. these things are built to last. These are not plastic. These are not something that, that will, will break just by looking at it. Um, mm -hmm. There is, there's some, there's some weight to them. Can you explain to us why, why the weight? What are the benefits? What is it that you guys did that makes this light different? And what is it that you have applied from your huge lighting experience with for lighting overall i mean you're phillips so you're get you're getting you got all this knowledge from different lights from different industries and how does that apply into the phillips light coral carry generation two yeah a very import, important word and this is reliability uh, so built to last like you also mentioned we we chose uh, uh, um the design um 
to really make sure really want to make sure that this design would last in the typical aquatic environment for many years to come mm -hmm. i personally believe the hobby is already very expensive for the uh, for, for, for the typical reefer and the light is of course none other eh? it's a very expensive uh, piece of equipment and we wanted to make sure that the lamp you buy would really last for a long time so our personal first choice was actually to make it a passively cool design so no fan no active part nothing which would uh, require maintenance for in a one two three four five years uh -huh. so it starts with a passively cool design um, to distribute the heat efficiently so to yes you have a single led which is very small it's only one square millimeter quite often it's it's only that big the active area of that led that that uh, that that warmth created into that uh, led needs to be extracted because that actually uh, reduces the performance of that led okay. to do that adequately you need to have uh, different substrates so we start with a pcb a metal core pcb and that metal core pcb goes into the heat sink that uh, connection between those needs to be as efficient as possible and then when, when, when that heat is going, that needs to be spread over that entire fixture to really get the, uh, the, the lowest, that we call this a junction point of the LED. The junction temperature should be really as low as possible to guarantee a good lifetime of the product itself. So, and that simply requires, by the force of, uh, let's say, physics, <laughs> by the <laughs> nature of physics, it, re it requires mass weight. And that weight is needed to distribute that uh, uh, adequately. Um, and simply with the amount of uh, power which goes into the fixture, uh, we need about uh, yeah a few kilograms of uh, metal to distribute this uh, correctly. We also then um, going forward with this reliability topic is we wanted to make sure that it was really resistant to the aquatic environment, so it should be splash proof. It's IP64, which means you can drop it in the water and, and hang it back up and it still works. It's not intended to work on the water, of course, but it, it needs completely uh, splash proof. And uh, that I think that's very important, but that also requires, in combination with the, the optical method we use, to use a glass plate. This, this glass plate is also a bit more heavy than, than plastic, but it also makes, um, yeah, with respect to lifetime, plastics also degrade, especially when you have so high uh, light densities on this plastic. And, the plastic yellows over time and 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 that's why we make actually the choice for a glass plate uh, which which yeah easy to maintain and um, only downside of it it's that's a bit more heavy than uh, alternative choices mm -hmm. and last point is is we added the the, the drivers which actually convert uh, let's say the, the power input power from the from the mains to uh, drive current for the LEDs, we integrated these into the Luminaire. So it's a single box system. You just have a power cable and a, and a control cable, which makes it easier to uh, to, to 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 install in that matter. Um, and yeah, that that also increases the weight a little bit. So That's that fair, all yeah. accumulated uh, yeah, results in the 15 pound weight of the existing uh, product. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. I mean, I love the lights. I mean, at first I was like, "Mom, this is this are heavy," but then the more I looked at it, I was like, "You know what? This thing is just built to last." I love the fact. I know somebody had uh, already commented about no fans, and uh, which is great. That's one of the first things that I noticed. There's no fans. You know, there are companies out there that have you send equipment once a year for maintenance, and you have to pay for the maintenance. It's like, what's up with that? So, you know, I, if I'm paying that much money, it should be good. It should be good to go. So having not having a fan is great because I don't have to worry about sending it in. I don't have to worry about clogging up. How many times have computer have we had computers where they clog up and we have to buy those air spray so that we spray yeah. the fan so it doesn't so yeah. it works? I don't want to deal. I don't want to deal with that with my light. And uh, the heat sink is amazing. I can tell you, I can put my hand over that light and nothing. It's not like I have to keep my hand there. It's 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 lukewarm. It's fantastic. I I, I love it. Um, and the IP64 rating is great. Now, I know Luke said that you could probably dump the light in the water and then pick it up and still work. I do not recommend trying that. No, 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 I don't no, say tested, you know, because 
you shouldn't do that. It probably would be okay, but I wouldn't push my, uh, but I wouldn't try it just because of that. It's not meant to do that. It's only if it happens, you know, an accident happens or something, you're unsure. You have no idea how many times I've, I've gotten support tickets from people that have inadvertently or by accident dropped their lights into the, into the water. And as soon as they drop them up, the light's dead. And then you have to, and you know, unfortunately, I would be hard pressed to to find a company where the dropping the light in the water is covered by the warranty. It's not covered by the warranty. So um, um, you guys were great by adding IP64 rating. And I know a lot of companies, like uh, uh, some companies nowadays are creating products for the aquarium industry that are IP64, IP65 rated. They should have been that way from the get-go, but they're never yep. that. You know, they, have, they were not because people didn't demand it. People didn't know any better. And they, the companies could just sell you that. And, and they, you know what? They'll drop it in the water. We'll just sell them a new one. And that was the mentality. And I don't, you know, I don't believe in that. So having IP65, IP64 rating is fantastic. That just gives you that, 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 that um, um, peace of mind that when water splashes, because it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when water splashes to it, yeah. either you drop it or a fish splashes or you have a big clam and it squirts water up, you know, you're going to be able to prepare yeah. it. Um, um, I wanted to uh, ask about the controller on those lights. The mm -hmm. the lights are fully controlled. Um, uh, they have an app, and the app is easy to use. Yeah. I want to ask you: Is there a particular lighting schedule program that you guys run that you have experienced the most benefit from it? And and if so, can you just talk about it? Yeah. So so for the app, and uh, uh, we went for simplicity actually. So uh, we we have two active channels. Uh, let's 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 consider them as a blue channel and a white channel. While we have over six different LEDs uh, into the product, they are grouped together, and the user can so can select something between a, a a daylight color and a saturated blue color, and walk in between those points completely. Um, what we what we see is is that uh, it's it's important to 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 at least get some insurance for 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 the, for the for the customer that it should be easy to set up the lamp. So we have some mm -hmm. default schedules there, and what we what we typically mention and what we typically say is, is, is we have a lot of debate about this is that uh, we we recommend to tank to drive the the product for at least four to five hours a day on a typical white color point. Mm -hmm. um, this is not maybe for everybody, but if you look from physically from coral growth perspective, uh, the development of a natural and, and healthy coral, we believe uh, that uh, at least having four or five days uh, hours a day, a white color point, which we, uh, with white, I mean, where uh, both channels of the, of the coral care unit are, are used. Uh, mm -hmm. Is uh, uh, it will result in better performance on the longer term. It means that that after those four hours you can can drive it completely blue and whatever you want, what your personal taste is. But mm -hmm. we, we have those 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 different uh, um, sex, se segments actually. The first is coral growth. The second one is how the the coral looks at that moment and how the coral develops. Those three things are very important when setting up the light. Um, one of them is very personal, eh? how the coral looks, uh, how do you perceive uh, how the coral is, is uh, what kind of, um, how you like the tank to be set up. Eh? Some people like it blue, others like it white, some people like it natural, others kind of get a bit more saturated in colors. That That's very uh, personal. But the other hand, we have the, the, the growth perspective there, we recommend to use the white at least for four or five hours a day. And okay. we made schedules there. Um, and uh, those are some common schedules you can select in the app. And we actually recommend that if you do not like the white look, just keep the white look in the, in, in the morning or just actually why it's also bright white outdoors. Mm -hmm. And um, when you really want to, to extend that blue uh, portion and really want to go down to the blue portion, do that in the, let's say, the afternoon and the evening. 
Okay, so I wanted to, um, um, before we move on, and I, you know, as I want to make sure, it is 11.56, that means you have four minutes. You have four minutes to enter for the giveaway. It does, we're using Gleam, so Gleam goes by the rules, and they will ensure that the legality of the people selected, the, role, the, lose are, the rules are followed. So the Gleam company is, is, is set to close the um, uh, giveaway entries at 12 o'clock central time so make sure you get you get your name in there and then we'll announce the winner you must be present to win all right so going back to the lighting thing i you know i've seen several companies um, um through videos of other companies that have gone to visit farms and everything. And I also noticed that some of the farms, they, they start in the morning and they have this peak where they run the white lights and the blue lights very high for a few hours, maybe from 11 until two or three o'clock. And then they drop the lights, they drop the intensity of the whites to keep that blue, you know, and, uh, and run that, especially towards the towards the, the time of the day when you have more visitors come in to, to, to see the corals. But while you see the corals in blue light, it does take a, a, a hybrid of lighting spectrums to get the corals to grow. Now you can see right now, we're showing pictures of farms in Europe that use the uh, Philips light and they've actually have developed or at least tested this theory of you know white light for a few hours and then got, go down to blue and they've seen that the growth is amazing yep. and uh, that is something that i don't do in my tank but i'm going to start doing it so my plan is to run my lights you know at 100 percent whites for a few hours in the middle of the day and then drop them to the white that i like which is about 75 yep. percent white and 100 percent blues and then yep. you'll see that car and then in essence you're kind of stressing the tank you're stressing your your control stressing the corals exactly you know, kind of like almost exactly. like going to work out when you work out you have to you have to stress your heart in order to get the actual results of a workout so in order to get the corals to grow you have to stress them out for a little bit and then let them rest so they recoup and then stress them up and then let them rest and recoup the same way nature does with the sun clouds sunny day you know overcast yeah, yeah. Exactly, indeed, and I think we, we also read some publications about that. Uh, we, we actually noticed that uh, uh, the, the difference between blue light and, and white light uh, is when you select white light, which is also typically occurring in nature in the in the first five meters of depth in a, in a coral reef, compared to 20 meters of depth where the, the amount of uh, red and green is almost uh, away. You see actually that the zooxanthella density is also different. So it seems to be that depending on the amount of green and red uh, light in the spectrum, we actually see that uh, the coral is also changing its oxantella density. So oxantella are brown, eh? so reducing that oxantella density will actually increase the, the vividness of the colors. Yes. And on top of that, you actually see that uh, some, some pigments are on top of the oxantella, covering like a sort of sunglasses, mm -hmm. some of them on the side. And those one on the tops, which we, we, we typically see as those white colors, color the, the growth tips on the coral the, pick, the, tip, the tips what we want. and that is what you stress with just a few hours of white light that's amazing oh that's great all right everybody you got one minute countdown is one minute to uh give away and then we'll announce the winner i want to say thank you again to kevin kevin is putting there jeremy jeremy you're on you're supposed to be on vacation buddy uh jordan neil Devin is here too bob winfrey hey senior reeves i want to say hello to everybody again uh, we are streaming live on facebook we're streaming live on youtube if you like the show make sure you hit that subscribe button make sure that that bell that that little thumbs up that you know so you can get notifications next time so i wanted to show more pictures of corals because i know people on the comments say you know it's like i love the talk and everything but it, you know you know what talk is talk but let me see something in here so i want to see some pictures of corals so i've asked my producer to get us some more pictures of corals to show here that we can uh, that we can show and we can talk about the corals for, for a little bit you know um uh, take a look luke that's yours yeah, yeah, top down shot of my tank. I think uh, one and one. But year everybody, ago, so look at the little, look at all the tips. You see that there's on the top coral at the top. There's one, two, three, four. There's four main branches, maybe five. But every of the main branch, you see all the offshoots on the side. That's what you get with the light distribution because the light is bathing from all different sides. It's not just coming from the top, right? Yeah, correct, correct. 
Indeed. Look at the colors of that Big one. Time. I actually that one it look that one is yours, but I have that one too. Here in the United States is 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 considered the purple monster by Garf. It's an old coral, but it's a beautiful valida. It's an acropora valida. Look at the corals on that and look at the growth pattern. Very tight. I like it. Let's go to the next one. Look at that coral. Yeah, and look it's at actually a German uh, guy. It's not for my own tank. But it's mm -hmm. uh, it's also uh, indeed shot over a time ago. Yeah. Indeed, also very nice. Very nice. I also look like at it really. If you see in the top right, you see a lot of details in this coral as well in the image. Yeah, and you see all the offshoots. You see how it's not growing as a branch. It's like you see all the offshoots coming out, the little branches coming from the side. That tells you it's getting light. When you're getting pinks on the side and not just the top, that tells you that it's getting light from everywhere. And you do not get that from a single point or you do not get that from a light the size of a pizza box, a tiny pizza box, one of those that they sell at Target. Um, uh, you get it from a light with a big distribution, all right, or T5s. Uh, let's go to the next picture yeah this oh. is my tank at the moment indeed show off <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. any questions <laughs> i love that tank look at that stag horn oh my god that is beautiful and look at the growth again look at the table the table right dead center at the top the way it's just growing wider it, it is just beautiful nice nice picture let's go to the next one yeah this is uh, another shot it's a bit bit more ago but uh, so yeah. just one one thing my lobophilia I, I like this always it's 10 years old now this uh, lobophilia oh on God. the bottom right so i got it when it was a fist only a fist oh so when wow. that, in the, in those 10 years it grew it's now about uh, 35 kilograms which is uh, 70 wow. pounds wow it's huge it's huge it's now actually uh, to the window it's becoming a problem <laughs> Yeah, that is amazing. Look at that. Let's go to the next picture now. Oh, that's my tank right there. Um, um, that is a um, um, uh, 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 a robusta coral right there. There is a Langsai on the lower left-hand side, and then there is a Greg Carroll um, Afflorescence. Hey, Greg, our good friend in California. Um, uh, always, always fun. But the growth again of those corals, it is in the coloration. Take a look at the coloration. Look at the uh, on the bottom right hand bottom right hand corner. You see that afflorescence. One of the things about Greg Carroll's coral is that it's beautiful if you have it under the right lighting. You get those purple blue tips. Otherwise, you just get a brown coral. And this again is all under Philips Coral Care. The coloration in here is what I'm talking about. So, you know. Those people that those companies that are saying that the that the that the Philips Coral Care Generation Two is not good enough for corals for SPS. Well, here's the proof. These are corals grown under the Coral Care Generation Two. I'm not sure. You know, hey, you know what? If the if the pictures are, um, um, if they don't believe that, I don't know what else I can tell them. All right, let's go to the next picture. Ah, there you go. There's another. That's a that, hey. That is a what they call a pink lemonade. Look at the pink lemonade. Look at that coral. And as you can see, look at the picture. This is not taken on a tank with blue lights. This is not a tank with all blue lights. I actually run my tank in what is called Northern Daylight, which is about 10K. If you look at a tank using the standard ISO measuring. Um, uh, so it's not 20K because, you know, um, um, that blue is it's 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 uh, it's not 20k. It's actually northern daylight. And uh, look at the pink and the yellow on that pink lemonade. And then let's go to the last picture. Oh, there is a, nice. another picture in there. And look at that contrast right there. And that's what I like about that picture is the contrast from the blues and the greens. There's the pink lemonade at the bottom, and then there is a acropora vin. The vin is all the way in the bottom bottom there's a little bit of the vin in there and you take a look at that vin look at the look at the pink look at the green look at the blue again all under coral care generation 2 lighting so i'm not sure what to tell you if you don't believe me those light those pictures should be should be the proof in there so it is 1205 which means that the giveaway is closed now by gleam again we are using gleam to ensure that the selection process is legal and it's fair um, because we've heard rumors out there that people think that the giveaways are rigged. Um, uh, again, they don't know what they're talking about. So um, uh, we use Gleam. Um, uh, and um, 
I, I'm sure my producer is going to let us know the winner. Oh, yeah, the winner. We have the winner. All right. Luke, are you in charge of the drum roll? <laughs> there is Luke with the drums. Uh, <laughs> and the <I'll> winner, <laughs> remember, you must be present. You have to be present either on Facebook or YouTube, and you're going to have to say comment. You have to comment and say, hey, he was a, a wave, uh, you know, a thumbs up, a little wave. I'm here, I'm here, jump in. You know, um, animated GIFs are encouraged because they're always fun. But the winner is Jeremy D. Young. Jeremy D. Young. Jeremy D. Young has won the Phillips starter kit. Uh, yeah, not Nathan. Good try. Uh, you know, Nathan and Jeremy, you know, they may sound alike, but they're not. <laughs> almost, um, almost. Good try. <laughs> Um, uh, all right. So let's, um, Luke, it's been amazing. Um, uh, Jeremy, where is Jeremy? Um, uh, and Jeremy, not Jeremy Reichel. I said Jeremy D. Young. Jeremy D. Young. So not Jeremy Reichel. Again, guys, thank you so much for being here. We love it. Um, uh, it, it. It's fantastic. If you like the stream, if you like the content, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that little bell on YouTube. That little bell will also will automatically tell you exactly when we do a live showing. So if you miss the emails or the social media posts about a live showing, because you you know, we all we're all busy working. Um, uh, then that little bell will automatically send you a notification, a, a, a real time live notification of the of the show, and you can, you know, click on it and start watching the show. So we love it, um, uh, Luke. Thank you so much for being here. It's we appreciate your time. I know you're in. It, it, it's the end of the year. You want to spend time with the family, and uh, it's dinner time for you. But we appreciate the fact. We thank you for 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 creating from thinking out of the box and creating such an amazing light um as we said before it, it might take a little depending on the light you're coming from it may take your corals a few months to acclimate to it but if you stick with it like i did um the proof is in the pudding we showed you the pictures i show you the 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 side by side pictures and we showed you pictures of corals from Luke's tank from my tank showing you that the lights do work they do grow things um, um, the side by side picture should you know it's it's six months the, the the amount of growth that I got in six months with those lights is just downright incredible and on top of that I didn't lose the coloration the coloration is still there and it got better so um, thank you so much Luke uh, thank you for for being here. I want to say awesome. thank you to everybody. Again, uh, Alex Correa, thank you for being here. Tim Law, Chaz Peoples, um, uh, Nathan Hall, John Tolbert, thank you so much. If I miss anybody, please, I apologize. It's just so many people here. Um, I want to say thank you to Dave and Brandy, the owners of Coral View that make this happen. I want to say thank you to April. She is our producer and uh, she's the one that does all the hard work. So if the shows are really good, it's because she does it, not us. Um, um, and uh, Jeremy for the pictures as well. Thank you so much. We want to say Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, and a happy, happy new year. We'll see you in 2021. Happy new year, and thanks for having me.